Okay, next we're gonna take a look at tracks in Reaper. As I mentioned in the intro, over here is considered the track control panel or the TCP. And as I also mentioned, when you deal with tracks in Reaper, all tracks are the same. There's no such thing as a different track type. There's no instrument tracks, aux tracks, bus tracks. Any track can do anything. And to create a new track, we can go to the menu here, the track menu, insert new track. We could right click over here, insert new track. Or we could simply double click. Double click, we get a new track. We could duplicate a track by selecting it, going to the track menu, hit duplicate tracks, or we could right click and we get the same menu as the one up here. Right click it, duplicate tracks. We can reorder tracks just by moving them around. Let's put this one up here or this one down here. We can resize them right here, make this one smaller this one bigger, and we can name them right over here. Just double click and give it a name. Drums, bass, and we can tab to the next track. Guitar, and now our tracks are named. Now we could delete tracks with the menu as well. Just click on it, right click, and hit remove tracks. Or we could simply select it and hit delete. We can insert multiple tracks using the insert menu and going down here to multiple tracks. And this dialog opens. Now this is very helpful for naming our tracks because it'll automatically name our tracks and put a number at the end. Let's say we wanted to add four vocal tracks. Change this to four, type in vocal, hit OK. And we have four new tracks named vocal one, vocal two, vocal three, and vocal four. That's a lot quicker than creating four tracks and renaming them. And we could also add color to our tracks. If we select one and right click it, go down here to track color. We could choose set tracks to custom color and a color wheel opens up, or we could choose sliders or a picker based on the name or this or even crayons. Let's go back to this, make it brighter, and let's choose green. Hit OK. And now this track is green. Let's make this one red. Track color. Make it brighter, make it red. Hit OK. And now this track is red. We can also randomize the colors. Let's select them all by holding down Shift. Go to track color and set tracks to random colors and we get random colors for all the tracks. Now we could also add icons to the tracks to make it easier to see what's on each track. Let's rename these drums, bass, guitar, and vocals. Now to make that stand out, let's add an icon to each track. Start with the drums, we right click, and go down to track icon. Set the icon, and this dialog opens up. So we could choose an icon for our drums. Let's choose this one right here. Now there's an icon, make this bigger, showing us the drum set. Let's do the same thing for the bass. Right click it, go to track icon. We'll choose bass, and it looks like this. Let's do it for guitar. And that looks like this. And let's do one for vocals. Now for vocals, I like to choose a microphone. Like this one here. And it looks like this. Letting us know that this track is a vocal. It's a little quicker to see than looking at the name. Now let's take a closer look at each track. If we go up here, this is our fader. If we make it lower, the sound will be quieter. If we bring it up, the sound gets louder. We can double click it to put it back. So if we bring it all the way down, we want to go back to our default, 
just double click it and it goes back to zero, the default. The same with our pan. We can pan it to the left, so the sound just comes out of the left speaker, or to the right, the sound just comes out of the right speaker, double click it to put it back to the center. We could also mute our track, which turns the track off and also turns off the computer processing power for that track. So if we mute a track, it's not taking up any resources, but we're also not going to hear it. We could also solo each track, which is the opposite of mute. If you hit it, only that track gets heard. We could add effects, which we'll do later. We could invert the phase or polarity right here, add some automation or envelopes, and set our inputs and recording modes over here. But we'll get to that later. What I want to show you now is some modifiers for adjusting our tracks. The first one is audition mode. Let's say we have a fader in a good position. Let's bring it down to about minus 7 dB. Now let's say we like this level right here, but we want to audition another volume level. We can do that by holding down a modifier. For PC, it's Alt. For Mac, it's Option. And if we hold it down and move our fader, we're going to hear the volume change. But if we don't like it, we want to go back, we can just let go. And it jumps back to minus 7 dB. So we didn't lose our level. So it's a great way of auditioning. And it works the same way for pan. If the pan is set over here, and we want to try a different pan position, Hold on Alt on the PC or Option on the Mac and move it. And if we don't like it, just let go. It jumps back. Now, if we decide we do like it, like with the volume, we could let go of that modifier and it'll take us out of audition mode. So let's do that. Go on audition mode. If I let go, it jumps back. But if I do it again and this time let go of the modifier, the level stays. So I can decide to come out of audition mode and change the level more permanently. And it works the same way for pan. If it's over here, I can move it in audition mode to over here, let go of the modifier, and then it stays. Now there's also different modes for our mute and solo. Let me show you those. Put these back to the default. Now just hitting the mute just mutes that track. But we could also unmute all the tracks. So let's say this track, this track, and this track are all muted. If I go up here and hold down the modifier, on PC it's Control, on Mac it's Command, and just hit it, all the tracks in our project get unmuted. And they could be any track. So if there's a lot of different tracks and we don't see them all, we want to unmute them all in one shot, like this one and this one. Just hold down the modifier, hit the button, and they all get unmuted, which we could also do by using right click. Let's choose this one and this one, right click this, and choose Unmute All. And that does the same thing, but it's quicker with the modifier. Just click it, and all the tracks that are muted become unmuted. And we could do the same thing with Solo. Let's solo this track, this one, and this one. Hold on the same modifier, Control on PC, or Command on Mac, just hit it, and all the tracks in the project become unsoloed. This one or this one. Hold on the modifier, and they're all unsoloed. Which again, we could do by right clicking the menu and choosing it right here unsolo all. And all the tracks that are soloed become unsoloed. Again, it's much quicker than finding each track that's soloed. Now, there's another mute mode I want to show you called inverted mute. That's going to do the opposite of muting a track. If we hold on Alt on the PC or Option on the Mac, hit the button, all the tracks get muted in the project except for that one. So it's kind of like solo. Do the same thing over here. All the tracks get muted except for that one. And this one, and this one. And we can undo it with the other modifier. That's called inverted mute, which we could also right click right here and choose mute all others which is the same thing as inverted mute. Just click it, and all the tracks in the project get muted, except for this one. We can also do exclusive mute, so only that track will be muted. So if this track and this track are muted, and we choose exclusive mute for this one, the other ones get unmuted, and just this track gets muted. We can also do exclusive solo. 
So if there's a few tracks that are already sold, like this one and this one, we want to solo this track without having to unsolo these two. We could right click and choose exclusive solo, or we could use the modifier. On PC, it's Alt and Control. On the Mac, it's Option and Command, and just hold them down and hit it, and just that track is soloed, which is really good for soloing through the song. If you want to solo this one, and this one, and this one, I don't want to have to keep unsoloing each one, like this. I can just quickly solo this one, then this one, then this one, and all the other tracks get unsoloed. It's pretty handy, and a lot quicker than soloing and unsoloing. Now we could also mute and solo by dragging, but this only works with tracks that are next to each other. So let's say we want to mute these three tracks, just hold down here and drag to this one and this one, and all three tracks are muted. Or this one. And you can unmute them the same way. Click it and just drag each one, and they get unmuted. And the same thing for solo. You want to solo the drums and the bass and the guitar? We could do it like that and undo it by going back. But again, they have to be next to each other. But it's still quicker than hitting one at a time. Just quickly grab it and mute those tracks. Now we could also create temporary groups in Reaper. Later on, I'll show you more advanced grouping, creating groups and saving them. But if you want to quickly create a group, we can create temporary ones by simply selecting multiple tracks. You can hold down shift to do tracks that are next to each other, like this, this one, this one, and this one. Or if they're not next to each other, you can hold down control on the PC or command on the Mac to toggle them. Take this one out, put this one in. So the temporary groups don't have to be next to each other. So let's create a temporary group with all of these tracks. I'll hold down shift, select them all, and now there's a temporary group for these four tracks. So if we grab the fader, all the tracks move together. Or the pan, or the mute, or the solo. So it's a great way of creating a group very quickly, although it's temporary. And everything else still works with them, like audition mode. So I can pull this down by holding down Alt or Option, and then let go, it jumps right back. Same with our pan. And we could also disable our temporary group. So let's say we're moving these faders together because they're grouped in a temporary group. But we want to change the drum level, but we don't want to have to unselect it. We can hold down Shift and move the fader, and just the drums move. Or the bass, or the guitar. But we don't have to unselect them to do that. Instead of doing it here, we can keep them selected. So they behave as a group for muting or soloing. Or we could hold down shift and it disables the group for soloing, for muting, moving our pan, and moving our fader. So it's very helpful if you don't have the time or it's not necessary to create a real group, which we'll get to later. Now you should also know everything we're doing in the track control panel. In this window, can be done in the mix window. Let's open the mixer. Everything we've been doing can be done here as well. We can mute all the tracks by dragging or soloing. We can create a temporary group by selecting them all. They move together. Hold on Shift to disable it. Unselect them all and right click over here for exclusive solo. Turn off all the soloing with the modifier or the mute or unmute them all. Everything I showed you early in the video will work on the mixer the same way. So that's pretty much it for now. That's the basics of tracks. In the next video, I'm gonna go over the track manager where we can manage the tracks a lot more efficiently. So let's go. Thank mm -hmm. you.